Hello everybody and welcome back to Gardens and Crystals with me Wesley Peterson and once again I have another one of those propagation videos for you because I have another plant that is growing extremely well for me, extremely fast and needs cutting back. Behind me you can see a bit of a bush here, that is my beautiful Raphidophora tetrasperma that has been doing wonderfully for me. And it has just grown out a vine that has flopped over to the side that I need to go in and prune off and make me another beautiful plant. But there's something special about this propagation. This plant has thrown off a defect, or you can say a freak of nature, or you can say a new type of leafing, or you can say a new type of cultivar, or whatever you want to call it, there is one vine where every single leaf has leaves growing in exactly the same way that really don't look like the normal Raphidophora tetrasperma. It only has one long leaflet at the front and two or four, or and four, mostly four leaflets at the side instead of being a whole leaf. And you'll see what I mean because I'm going to take it in for a closer look at the whole plant and then you'll see the difference between this new cutting that I'm going to take off and I hope I'm going to get a whole new plant that looks just like this, which is going to be completely different from the mother plant grouping. You'll know what I mean when you see it in a moment. So let me first take you in and give you a closer look at my mother plant. Now there is one slight thing I do want to mention before we go in for a closer look and that is I found that this plant really doesn't enjoy being fertilized too much. Now, when I first got this plant, I, after about a week, I started fertilizing it, and I've had it months now, and I saw that it started browning at the tips and getting browning spots, and I just wondered what it was, and I found out that it was to do with the fertilizer, because when I stopped fertilizing and new leaves come out, browning spots stopped. And just recently here, I went around and fertilized all my plants. I actually put down slow releasing fertilizer on the top of the soil on nearly every single plant I have in my indoor terrace garden. And I've noticed lately that my Raphidophora tetrasperma has started getting brown spots on the leaves because I didn't think about it. I was just in my flow and I didn't think about it. And now there is slow releasing fertilizer on the top of the soil, which I can't get out because it's lots of balls. And one of the vines or a couple of the vines have started getting brown patches on the leaves. Now, I know the plant is going to be fine. She will recover from this. She did last time, but that is why my plant has a few brown spots on it at the moment. So be careful with your fertilizing of your Raphidophora tetrasperma. Maybe it's mine that is just fussy this way. I don't know because all our environments are different and our plants react differently. Maybe your plant likes a lot of fertilizer. So you know the best thing to do for your plant. So anyway, now that said, let's go in and have a look at my lovely, lovely plant. Now, as we go in, you will notice some of my other beautiful plants around. And before we go right into the Raphidophora tetrasperma, I just wanna have a little quick pan down at my two beautiful plants in front here. I have the Alocasia sabrina on the left. And yes, there are some yellowing around the edges of the leaves, but these are the old original leaves, most of those and some are new leaves coming out. This was a rescue plant that I got for 50 kroners a pop because they were wilting and about to be thrown out. And now I've had them a good while and they are producing leaves all the time. As you can see down here in the middle, there's a lovely leaf, can you see it? There, and then there's a one more leaf that is huge and it's starting to come out there. And they are doing wonderfully. So it's a healthy, happy plant. And it doesn't matter about the yellow. That's nature. And this plant is doing really well. And next to that, I have my Diefenbachia reflector. And this plant I've also had for a good while. And look at this. It's doing absolutely beautiful. And once again, there are a few brown patches because this plant actually does like to be kept moist, as well as the alocasia. And it also likes to be misted over to keep the leaves happy and healthy because it can dry out quite quick. But if you look at this plant, I want to show you especially because it is flowering for me. Look here. Look here. Isn't that just 
amazing. I can't believe it. I really can't. There are three of these flowers coming out on this plant. And then as we look down here, there are also three coming out on this plant too. So I just wanted to give you a quick look at those because how often do you see that? My beautiful Diefenbachia reflector. So let's get on and get in and look at the plant of the day, which is the Raphidophora tetrasperma. And right down in the bottom of the pot, I have Epipremnum aureum, Marble Queen growing, and it started to grow up in between my Raphidophora tetrasperma, which is what I wanted, and that's absolutely fine. I see a yellow leaf down there. I will take that out later. Don't worry about that. And then look at this beautiful plant. She is growing for me wonderfully. And the place where I went and bought this plant, they had like six examples. And I bought one straight away. And when I went back after, the lady said to me, is your Raphidophora tetrasperma still alive? Because all the other ones in the shop, only a couple of days after arriving, died. Yes, all the other ones that were left behind died. My one has grown and survived and is looking beautiful. Look at that. And the vine I'm talking about that I need to take off at the top is not the one you're seeing there that you would probably think I'll be taking off. I'll let that ride for a bit. It is the one over here, this one. That one has got special leaves growing on it. The other leaves, you can see the normal shape of the leaves. They have lots of slits in the leaves like that. Okay, that's the normal kind of shape. But the one that I'm going to take off, the leaves are all on the stem like this one. One long piece at the top and four pieces on the side only. And that goes through all the way up the stem. And I will show you that later when I take off the cutting to show you how I'm going to propagate it. And here, as I was saying, these brown patches that weren't here only a couple of days ago before I fertilized this plant have started coming out on my beautiful leaves. And I am sure this is to do with fertilizer. But as you can see, most of the plant has nothing happened to it. Most of it. It's just a couple up here, but it's starting to happen down this one plant, but at the bottom, still very fine. So as I said, I am a little bit worried, but it's only a little part of the whole overall plant, so it should be okay. So now you see my beautiful Raphidophora tetrasperma close up, and you've seen all the action going on. I am just going to climb over <laughs> my other beautiful plants down here that are growing really well in front, and go and just prune off that stem so I can bring it in and show you those amazing leaves. So here we go, I've got my cutting already off. And if you look at the mother plant, you can hardly see I've taken anything off. And she still has this one up here that is growing out, but I actually want to fold that in around the trellis because it's the same kind of leaves as the rest of the plant. So I actually want to just fold that around and start pushing out the plant more around the middle. I can see new leaves coming out. I can see she's doing fine. And well, when she's producing big, long, lovely, cuttable pieces like this, then you can't not be happy, right? This means new plants. And talking about new plants, I want to show you one that I made earlier from this plant. Yes, I think about a couple of weeks after I bought my plant home, she started racing up and I decided to take some cuttings to experiment to see if I would be able to get this plant to grow. And I want to show you the plant I got because it worked so well. So look here, people. In front of you, you see my beautiful Raphidophora tetrasperma cuttings that have just taken off and done so well for me. These were water cuttings. I took five leaf cuttings with a node, put them in water, let them propagate, and out of those five leaves, two survived. Two survived to become plants that survived the transformation to soil to become a beautiful 
plant in their own right. So now I have a beautiful bundle of this plant that is a well-established young plant and starting to get fenestrations I can see and the immature leaves. So this is really interesting because now you get to see how the leaves are while they're very immature before they start fenestrating and when they start fenestrating and the normal style of the leaf. So let's go in for a closer look. So look here, aren't these leaves absolutely scrumptious? Look at the leaves. This is the kind of normal style and look, a very young plant that is getting leaves that are growing out in fenestration straight away. And then you can see a leaf like this one and the one down here. They are immature leaves without any fenestrations coming out. And that's how they start when they're very, very young. So here I have a beautiful mixture of plain, lovely green leaves and leaves that are fenestrating and are getting slits. And I keep saying fenestrating. Actually, this is a fenestration because it's a hole in the leaf and the slits are without a hole. But this is a fenestration as well because those leaves are stuck together. So yes, it is fenestrating and it is getting slits. So look at that bundle. That is two leaves that have become a whole pot of young Raphidophora, Tetrasperma, an absolute success story for me. And I couldn't be more pleased. I just love this plant. I am so, so happy that my beautiful cuttings have worked out. And that is why I am ready to go in now and make me another plant with a different style. So I'm going to bring those leaves up again now so you can see the absolute difference in the style of them. So when I bring in this new stem that I've just uh, pruned off my mother, Raphidophora tetrasperma, you can see it has morphed into an absolutely different type of plant or a different type of Raphidophora tetrasperma. These leaves, if you look at them closer, all of them have a long piece at the front and four side pieces. They have fenestrations and slits. You can see the one down here is exactly the same. One long one at the front and then the two at the bottom with slits. And then this one here at the end, one long one at the front and two slits at the bottom with leaves and the one coming out is doing the same. And if we should go right to the bottom, you can see another one here one long piece at the front, and then just the two lobes at the bottom and the one down there. So every single one on this stem and the rest of the stem that is in the mother pot is like this. So I have a stem that is throwing off a consistently different mutation from the original style of Raphidophora tetrasperma. And that's why I can't wait to put these in as water propagations and make me a whole plant like the one I'm holding here with just this style of leaf and let that grow out and be a big plant like the one behind me with just this style. Because then I'll have two different types of Raphidophora tetrasperma in my house from one pot that I bought. Isn't that amazing? And the only one that survived from the plant center where all of their other ones died. And look at me now. From that one pot, I have a pot here of young, beautiful, and normally growing leaves of this Raphidophora tetrasperma, and then I'm getting on with this one here. So let me get on with pruning off this stem and putting it in as a water propagation. So easy peasy, and as we always do, you find the nodes here and the leaf, the nodes here and the leaf, so I can see where I need to prune off. So there's too much at the bottom here because I need to be able to get this in the bar. So I'll leave a centimeter on that side and then I can leave a longer piece on the top just so that I know I have some space if there should become any rot on this beautiful leaf here and these nodes. So that is the first special designed mutation Raphidophora tetrasperma leaf ready to go into water propagation. So I'll carry on and do that with the next one here. Give it a good amount. Oh, I already cut there, so I have to take it there now. Cut there. Number two there, look at that leaf. That is very special that they're all like that. Into the pot. Next one. Like that. Again, that same style, isn't it amazing? Isn't it just amazing? 
another one. And now we're down to the last two. So the top one is going to be with two leaves because she's throwing out a new leaf and there's only one node section. So we'll cut those two. And now you can see once again, that same style of leaf and the node, that same style of leaf with a baby leaf and the node at the bottom. So you can see the nodes on these. Right, let's get all these into the vase and I will show you the vase with all my cuttings in, waiting to become a whole new mutated form of Raphidophora tetrasperma. So there we have them, my beautiful Raphidophora tetrasperma. Cuttings are all propagating now in water, the first moments of their propagation life and they look wonderful in here. And they are all unique, special, mutated leaves to give me a different style of plant when they grow up and beautiful. So when I have this next to the mother plant, we're really going to see two different styles of the same plant. Isn't that just amazing? Oh yes, I just love them. I'm just so happy. And look, you can see at the bottom, you can see all of the nodes in there doing their thing with this beautiful, beautiful plant. Now please, if you have a Raphidophora tetrasperma that has mutated into a different style and you've made new plants of it, please write about your experience with this down below because this is so exciting and I'd really love to hear if you have mutated plants and if there's any way possible that I could get to see pictures of them, I'd love to see pictures of them as well because this is just a one-off beauty from my plant. All the rest of it is normal leaves and my cuttings from before, normal leaves. And this, this is just a beauty. So I'm really excited about this and I really hope all of these I've got, well, how many did I get now? I don't even know, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so like last time, I had five leaves last time to survive to make me that big, beautiful pot. I've got five leaves once again, and I'm gonna do my best to keep all five this time because I want to get this mutated style as a bushy plant straight away, right? Oh, so that's all I have for you for this Raphidophora tetrasperma cuttings and propagations video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've been inspired to get in and prune back your Raphidophora tetrasperma if it's starting to leg out and you have enough that you can make yourself some new plants in different styles, just like the ones in front of me. I found this plant to be a very easy plant to grow. It needs to be allowed to dry out between waterings. It really doesn't like to be overwatered. It really doesn't seem to like to be over fertilized. So please be careful with your fertilizing and get your water gauge, test the soil. When it's dry, you can water it again, but don't saturate or soak this plant. It really doesn't like it. I do spray it sometimes. It's in my indoor terrace garden here where the humidity is always between 50 and 70, depending on how much I've got it on. And it is just flourishing. It really is just flourishing. You can see it's by a window, but before all the new growth was coming out with this plant at the back of my room where it was quite dark, where there was the least light, and it had a grow light on the floor behind it, and it had these lamps with these LED lights above it, and they're nothing strong at all, just giving some extra light, and it's just, well, this plant has just taken off with all that. So, thank you once again for watching Gardens and Crystals with me, Wesley Peterson. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know when my next video will be uploaded, and I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.